Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, we're gonna talk about some design ideas for Power Apps Gallery. Uh, we're gonna cover how we can create dynamic tab for gallery and also custom tab for gallery. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's take an example of our regular gallery view. So this is the regular gallery that we always use. What I'm going to show you how you can convert this gallery to something like this. And what this gallery is showing now is showing the same data, but I have the different tab created for the different status. So when I'm on the not started, I can see all the not started tasks. When I move to the in progress, I can see all the in progress completed behind. So these are the different status in my SharePoint list that is connected to this particular Power App. The cool thing about these kind of tab, they are dynamic. So in the future, if I'm going to add more status or if I'm going to change any status value, this tab will automatically get that change and reflect in the app. So you don't need to change the app. Another example of the custom tab. So I can also, I'm also going to show you how you can create these predefined tab and based on the logic, the data will be structured. So in my first My Task tab, I'm seeing all the tasks assigned to me, anything that is due in seven days, all of the information and anything that is delayed. So this is what we are going to learn and I'm gonna show you step by step how you can convert your classic library to something like this, okay? So for that, I'm going to start from one of the existing app that I have. Okay, and you can also start from your an, an existing gallery that you have. First thing that you need to do for the dynamic tab, you need to insert a gallery into this app. So I'm going to insert gallery. Okay, the source or data source for this gallery is going to be the same data source that you have for your existing gallery. So for, in my case, it is work progress tracker. Okay, that is good. Then I'm going to my gallery control here and I'm going to delete these fields that is already there. Okay. And uh, before deleting the title, make sure that you select the title and insert a button. Okay. Because we're going to use the button as a tab. And then I'm going to delete the title also. Okay. So my gallery right now just has one control that is button and you can rename it and call it tab. Okay. Now the next thing. We don't want to show the entire thing or entire data source in this gallery. Instead, we need to select or find the column on which you want to create this dynamic tab. Okay, so let me show you my SharePoint list. So this is my SharePoint list and what I want, I want to create dynamic tab on my progress column. It's a type choice column. Okay, so the first thing that we need, we need to uh, find the unique progress choice from the column. So as you can see here, my data has different item. Each item can have one or uh, different status, right? So we need to find the unique value. So I need those unique status and how I can find that, I need to do the group by. So I'll go here and I'll tie the group by, there's a function. And I want to group by this data source. And then you need to type the column name. If I type my column name here, that was the progress it doesn't exist and that's correct. So right now the group by is only supported for the text column, okay? So we need to somehow get uh, another column that we can use that we can use to group by. And for that, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a function called add columns, okay? So we are adding a new column into this data source, okay? I'm gonna call it status, okay? So that's the column name and the value. Here I can find my status column, the progress dot value. Okay, so what I did, I created a new column called status and the value for this new status column is coming from my progress column, that is the choice column, okay? Now if I go to my group by, I can use the status column that I just created. So I'm gonna use that, then it's gonna ask me the name, so I will give the name tab. So we have created a new column for the for the status and we group by 
Now, if I go to this button control and go to the text value, I'm going to say this item dot, you can see your column here status. And you can notice, right? So now we have all these different choice value that I have in my choice column listed here. But we need to make it horizontal, right? So I'll go to the wrap count. And instead of one, I will use function called count rows. And then I'll search for my gallery control dot all item. Okay, so I am wrapping this gallery with the number of unique value that I'm getting from that choice column. The next thing that I will update is the width. So I'm going to use the parent dot width. Height I can adjust. I'm going to just make sure that it is staying here. Okay, then we want to change the button style. Okay, so first thing that I want this button to X and Y should be zero. Width of the button I'm going to say parent, that is the gallery dot template width. Okay, so this will take the full width and the height parent dot height. So whatever the height of the gallery. Okay, so as you can see here, our tab are almost ready. We need to apply some more UI that you can do. So, so in this case, in this particular uh, scenario, in the button, I'm going to change the border radius to zero because I want the rectangle in this case. And in the gallery, I will, I will do the template padding to one to add a little bit of space between each button. Okay, and then I'm going to select the gallery and go to this color property and make it transparent. Okay, and then I will go to the button and make sure that border for this button is zero. We don't need the border. Okay. Okay, so we have created this tab. Now we need to apply some logic to select a particular tab and set that value. Okay, so we are going to go to this button control on select what I'm doing. I'm setting a variable called variable current tab to this item dot status. So when I'm going to select the not started, this will be not started. If I click on in progress, then it will be in progress and other status. Okay, so this will give me that which tab the user has clicked or selected. The next thing that I want that are the color setting, right? So when someone select a particular tab, this should that should be highlighted to a particular color and rest can remain into the same color. So for that, I'm going to the color property of this button, go to the fill property. Okay. And here I'm going to write a formula. So if this item dot is selected, that's the property will give me whether the, this particular button or this particular item is selected or not. If it is selected, then I'm going to use this color. And if it is not selected, then I will use this color. Okay, by default, the first item is going to select it. So as you can see, a not started is selected. Okay, so this part is done. If I play this app now, I can see it's changing the behavior, but the gallery is not changing and that's correct because we have not filtered the gallery yet. So select the gallery where you are trying to create this tab behavior and keep the, the logic that you have already. You don't need to change that. Only thing you need to make sure that you are applying a filter action. So filter your gallery data or the data source that is this gallery is connected. Your column that you selected for tab, in my case, it was the progress dot value equals to variable current tab, because that's the, that's the variable that we are setting when user clicking on a particular tab. Awesome, right? Right. Now, if I play this app, if I go to in progress, complete it behind. Awesome, right? So I have changed the entire user experience of my app within a few minutes. Now let's see how this is dynamic, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my SharePoint, okay? And this is my progress column, the choice column. I'm going to add this column, add a new choice, save it, and I'm gonna change a particular item and change the status from whatever it was to awaiting. Okay, I'll go to my app. We need to refresh the data source. So I'll go to my data source and then go to my work progress tracker. 
and refresh. The moment I'm going to refresh, you will see another tab got created. And as you can see, right? So this is how dynamically you can manage your app behavior based on the data that you are storing. And it doesn't need to be in SharePoint. It can be in SQL, it can be in Excel or anywhere else. The data can come from anywhere. You just need to make sure that you are setting the logic correctly. One thing also you need to make sure that you uh, do, we are setting this variable, right? You need to make sure that on screen visible also you are setting this to whichever the default selection you want. In my case, I want this not started. Okay, and you can change, for example, instead of using the progress as a dynamic tab, I can use another choice column that I have or another text column that I have or any another column. Now let's talk about that instead of creating dynamic tab, I want to create more custom app for my need. I'm going to duplicate this screen because that's what we're going to use. The initial logic is same. Uh, if you want to create custom tab, you still need to insert a gallery, apply all that logic that you have. The information that's going to change is actual data here. So I can remove all of this because now items are not coming straight from my SharePoint list. Instead, I'm going to create my own tab. Okay, so I'm going to create a table and this table is nothing but uh, I have my task, task due in seven days, all tasks and delete task. And you can define your own type of tab that you want. Okay, then you will go to the individual button item and we need to make sure that we are changing this status because now we are not getting the status instead of this item dot value. Okay, so text also should be this item dot value. Now let's change some styling also. So in this case, I'm going to update the button style. I'll go to the advance. Then I will look for these uh, radius, bottom left, bottom right, top left, top right. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna see top left is 30 and top right is 30. Now we need to filter the gallery accordingly because in our case now we have the custom tab. So for example, my task should show me all the tasks where I am assigned to task due in seven days, you need to show the tasks that are due within seven days. All tasks should show you everything and then delay task should show you anything that is not completed. So for that, I'm going to just delete this from your existing gallery, okay? And instead of that, I'm going to use a function called switch, okay? And what we are switching with variable current tab because you remember that's the variable we are setting when we are clicking on in any of these tab item, okay? So if this is my task, if the current selected tab is my task, then I'm going to filter my work progress tracker, that's my data source. I have a column called assign to dot email equals to user. So when you work on Power App, you get this user a uh, predefined variable that will give you the information about the user who is accessing the app. So current user dot email. Okay. Then next, if it is task due in seven days. Okay. So this is my second tab. Here I'm going to use the filter. Okay. Similar work progress tracker, the name of the data source. I have a column called due date is greater than equal to today. So today is gonna give you the today's date and due date is less than equals to. Now we need to calculate the seven days from today. So I'm going to use a function called date add. What it does, it actually add uh, minute, days, seconds to a particular time. And where we are adding, we are adding to today because we need the seven days from today. So I'm gonna say how many days you want to add, seven. And what we are adding, we are adding the number days, okay? Then the next step that we have is the delay task, right? So what will be considered as the delay task where the due date is less than today. So that is past, right? So I'm gonna filter my work progress tracker list. Due date is less than today, okay? And the last is all task where I just need to show everything so I can just use my data source as it is. Awesome, right? And I'm gonna format that so you can see it. So this is the logic. Okay, let me run this app, I'll click on my task. So as you can see here, all the tasks assigned to me are listed here. 
if I click task due in seven days, I can see those are filtered. All task is going to include everything and anything that is delayed. Okay. And you also need to do the same thing as we did in the previous dynamic example. You need to set this variable current tab to something to default, right? So I can go to the on screen visible of here and then I'll say my tasks. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So this is what I like to show you today. Uh, this is the quick way to create this beautiful tab for your existing app. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. Keep watching. Keep learning. Thank you very much.